She's not as excited about her dinner I didn't tonight. Any, I didn't yeah. put any pork in it. There's no deliciousness in it. She she smelled our turkey dinner, and then she realized none of our turkey was in her dinner, and she's just yep. She just smelled it and walked away. <laughs> Hello and welcome to tonight's stream. It's been a long time. It's just Steve and me and a camera. Uh, when Zena's bumming, look, she's like, "Hi, I was wondering if I could get something else in my dinner." Um, hello and welcome to tonight's stream. Steve and I are playing some games to player tonight, and we're starting with starting. I'm spoiling. We are gonna have a bonus stream. Uh, let me quickly tweet that we're live. Uh, tonight we are playing Caper, designed by you uh Unai. Probably Unai. But Unai Rubio. Um, I we yeah. Uh, but published by Keymaster Games. This is a re-implementation of a game called It's Mine, which uh, I believe was at Essen last year, and it had been crowdfunded on not Kickstarter, some European crowdfunding website, I believe. And uh, from what I can understand, Keymaster Games uh, signed it and did some minor tweaks, upgraded the art, um, shifted the theme ever so slightly. Uh, and it's going to be a Gen Con, and they had limited release at Origins, and there's pre-orders available now, but we're going to play it, because it's two-player, and we play two-player games all the time. That's all supposed to happen. Two-player drafting. It's a two-player drafting game, yep. Drafting area control. I'm excited. I mean, well, I not guess it's, it's not no. really area control. Yeah, it's more... Like, sack collection? It's more like the battle line kind of control. The art in the whole... So the rule book is very crisp and beautiful and i just it does something in the dead center of the book it's so good it's so good it's a reference guide it's so good um so like you read setup and then you read kind of like how to play and like a little bit of the icon information and then it's just like here's all the stuff we were talking about so that was a nice pleasant surprise um, and then in this game, there are two different types of cards that we're drafting. There's thieves and there's gear. And they did this book, which is the FAQ for all the gear items. It's like a little catalog for stuff you steal. The inside is like a standard board game FAQ, but the outside, like they even went as far and put like the ad on the back and like, yeah. Get it? It's a fire sale because it's stuff to do with fire. Um, we also in a game like this, I mean, I'll mention later, I'm so happy to have a text description of every single card ability that's not just like, crammed into the card. They're just going to keep barking at each other because Ichi wants out and Zena hasn't eaten. Are we going to give up on her eating? Probably. Well, she didn't eat at breakfast. Put her, put her some treats in it. Make it delicious. Um... <laughs> I mean, it's not wise to upset a Wookiee, as my coaster says. So we're gonna do. So we're gonna do setup. I mean, even the bottom of the box. Look at the bottom of the box. This is not a sponsored stream. The art is just really pretty on this game. They did a really great job on the production value of this game. Uh, this is the box lid, I should say. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, there are three boards. So the idea is, is that we are going on heists in either Paris, Rome, or London, and there's different cards that you add into the decks for different locations, and. So they recommend if it's your first game, you play with Paris. So we're going to play with Paris um, so you can see it. And then there are three locations in Paris that we will be s stealing from. And we're going to put those locations on these boards in the center of the table. And we can use the pink side, which has little helpful text. Or we can use the wood side, which just looks like nice walnut or oak. I don't really, I'm not good at detecting wood types. Um, but here we go, here we go. So we're going to do setup. So, I'm going to use the pink side so we can remember some things. Uh, and we're setting this up between us. Um, so we're going to be... <laughs> Zena, Zena is now jumping and moving. And Iji's upset about it. Um, so we're going to set it up between us. Woo! And then there's a little round marker. Iji barking is not helpful at all. The stream's, the stream's real life, yo. It's how it is. Can you go give Ishii a treat? Because she's just going to be bratty. Um, and then there's like a little meeple that is the caper icon. Wait. It's very nice. 
And then I sweep up his gold into the caper shape. And he is the round tracker. So we, we do six rounds. And each round we're dra- drafting from a different... Now she ran to her dinner. Um, different type. And then we have money, which is available. Um, doo, doo, doo. These are the locations. These are the locations. I might need to shut the door. I, you can't. Like I don't understand how we can stop her from barking. Just one, We need three people. One to just rub her belly, and then two to do the stream. That's true. All right. One of these decks is Rome. One is London. We're going to play Paris. So I just needed the Paris deck. And so these have cards which are specific to Patty. Um, I'm going to get rid of this bag because it's useless. So we have player aid cards. And we're going to use these. We're going to shuffle them up. There's two player. And then there's like a three player and a four player variant. So if you're not playing with those, you can pull those cards out and put them in side. Then you want to make sure that you have the Paris specific cards. There is a little icon in the corner which is the location type. So these are Paris thieves and these are Paris uh, objects, gear, and then these are the five possible Parisian locations and we're going to shuffle them and we're going to select three. We have the wrong light setup going on right now. Uh, do you want me to turn this down? Sure. I mean, we need to turn those up slash on. That's the real solution. Should I point it up? No, it's fine. That one just needs to move to there. Um, so we are going to be stealing from the Eiffel Tower. Awesome. Notre Dame. There we go. There's the blinding I know and love. And the Louvre, which, you know, is Whoa, very Whoa, we got three of the awesome Paris ones. There's a bunch of generic ones, like the casino, that show up in all the cities. Okay, so now we put these... Uh, should excuse be. the green player. She should be slightly soundproofed. She's not. <laughs> nice try, though. Um, okay, and then there is gear deck and the thief deck which is the same for all of the locations but you mix in the location specific ones so seeing as you are the mint player you get to mix in that and i'm the cream player oh oh yeah do you want me to mix in the generic locations i just did oh it's fine to just do three paris ones that's the most flavor but yeah there's a yacht oh yeah an antique shop a bank and they all have slightly Museum? different things they get. Well, these ones are all them. artifacts. So let's let's do something. Let's let's mix. We'll uh, mix it up. I was gonna say the odds of three Perry Parisian ones pretty low. I want at least one Parisian one in here. Oh yeah. So let's try and get that to happen. Got the Eiffel Tower and a yacht. They we're basically on the uh, Seine then. Uh, I'm like, I'm nitpicking stuff. I'm like, I want to get a unique experience. Is there a different type of location? Like, I want all, nope, there's not. Okay. So there's only, there's like two types of point locations. I was looking for a third one. Well, I'll just have the chapel. All right. <clears throat> do, do, do. So, the ones we're not playing with can go back in the box. So there's a lot of replayability just out of the box in regards to locations. Try and mix this up as well as I can. Also to those of you out there in chat, hello. I don't think we have anybody in chat. So there might be there might be lurkers in chat. Oh well, yeah, that's true. And you know those watching in the future, not live. No, whenever we're low in chat, I'm always paranoid that YouTube messed up its notifications somehow. I mean, they YouTube definitely did. YouTube probably did. Twitter probably did. Twitch probably did. Yeah. I'm not worried about it. Um, cool. All right. So now we have a thief deck and we have a gear deck, which are just out of frame. 
You can't see them. So what's going to happen is we are going to play six rounds, and the number of cards we start with in our hands for each round is determined by the round tracker, which is right there. So for the first round, we're drafting thieves, and we're going to each have a hand of four. Then we'll select a card and then pass it, and we're going to do that until we each only have one card left, and we'll just discard that single card. So you never play your last card. Um, so what we're doing when we draft the thieves is we're playing the thieves to one of the three locations uh, where we're doing a heist. And so the idea is if you have the most capers, which is just an icon, at the location, you will win the treasure of that location card for scoring. But I won one location uh, last night and Steve won two and I still won. So there are other ways to get points. You can get points by making different um, sets of gear cards. Certain cards have, like, you get points, one point for every type of this card at the location, things like that. Um, and we'll talk those through as we go. So that's how you get points, um, kind of like a brief overview. And yeah, I think we're just gonna start and like play it out. Okay. But for importance, you cannot have more than three thieves at a location, and you cannot have more than three pieces of gear on each thief. Uh, and so if you don't want to play a gear card, you can always, during the gear phase, you can always discard it to get a dollar. Um, and if you don't want to play a thief card, I don't think there's an option. You have to play the thieves. You have to play the thieves. Yeah. yeah. So. One thing also, some of the locations do something special, so we'll go over it when we mention those. But Oh, we should do that now. Yeah. The chapel has a little padlock on this cream card. All the cream cards are... Thieves. Thieves. So it means that thieves are protected from being flipped, uh, which is an ability other cards can do. And then over here at the tower, there's a green card with a little coin symbol with a minus one, and that means that all green cards, all gear cards, cost one uh, fewer to play. Yep. Well, actually, green, green gear cards cost one fewer to play. Yep. So we're just going to jump into it, but before we jump into it, do you want to free the corgi and release the chewies? Uh, normally I would talk, talk to chat at this point, but we don't really have chat. So, um, I'll just talk, uh, about, I was, I was going to say Talk about game. the last time you stole something. Maybe not. I don't even remember the last time I stole something. Was it your heart? Was that, ah, wow. was that what I stole? Um, I could talk more about this game box and how interesting it is. The, it comes with a pencil. Because there's a score sheet, you totally need the score pad to help figure out scores. Um, and then there's a... Uh, the insert is very basic, but it's wood colored and there's a nice divider. And it came with very nice uh, plastic baggies for the different location cards. So that's nice. You can see it's... They like were hiding the fact best they could that it was a cardboard box. What's the cost of this game? Are you uh, 20, 25 uh, so this game is $25, which for a two-player game is maybe a little steep. I don't know. I feel like 20 is kind of the average cost for a two-player game. But I feel like 25 for this production quality is fine. Especially if you enjoy it. But there's the UV coating on the art on the front. Yeah, they kind of went all out as far as a two-player card game goes. Yeah, and it's like, there's no you like there's no indication that this is a cardboard box. Like even the inside of the box has art on it of the box lid, which is pretty unusual. So they definitely care about they care about appearances. Well, and they didn't chintz out on the graphic design too. Like, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. happier to pay a little more for a game, especially if I know they put a bunch of development into it. Take it. She's like, that's not the one I want. <laughs> She's being picky about which chewy she wants. Don't give her a new one. Huh? Make her eat that one. That's how I end up with thirteen old, like old chewies. This 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 stream is uh, the Steve and Tiffany real life show. If you came here for a comprehensive, well edited video about caper, when when the video says Tiffany and Steve play, and that's the title of the video, it's basically like we welcomed you to our house and that includes all the the shenanigans around it which includes the dogs <laughs> I 
So I just dealt out Steve and I both four cards, and so um, I'm the cream player, and I know that because my card, my um, player aid card has cream at the top, and Steve is the green player. So I will be the one to play first for this phase. Signified by the fact that it's cream on the jack yep. there. So I'm going to, ooh, uh, I'm gonna play, and it's not simultaneous, it is turn-based. So I'm going to play the actress on the yacht. They invited her for a private party. What they don't know is she's going to be stealing from them. Uh, when I play the actress, I get a coin. Um, indicated by the one symbol at the bottom, which is very small from your perspective, uh, perhaps. The saint is going to visit the Eiffel Tower, and for her, all green cards on her side are protected from being flipped, and she gets me three income. Alright, so then we pass hands, and now we play again! Duh. Uh, I'm going to play the banker to the yacht. He's the one that owns the yacht. It's, it's weird that there's a high score on that he no, knows about it. But I get two money for playing the banker. Um, and I guess we should point out, so the other abilities on these cards. So the actress, um, she will earn you caper points every for every pair of purple and yellow cards. And the yacht location, if you score it, will give you two points for every purple and yellow. So I'm like, did that because I, this is a purple-yellow location. And then the banker, at the end of the game, no matter if you win the location or not, will give me one point for every gold card at this location. So that's why I did that. All right, the artiste is going to visit the Eiffel Tower. And for him, he gets one caper for every green card at his location. Yeah, and capers is what determines if you win the location or not. I remember this hand. Drafting. Uh, I'm going to play the Madame to the chapel. So... I don't get any money for her, but for Steve to play any gear over here, it costs him an extra dollar, and mm -hmm. I get one point for every blue card he ends up playing over here yep. at the end of the game. And the blue cards are Paris cards. So. Yeah, Paris. Paris specific. Um, oh, no. She's at the chapel. She can't be flipped. She can't be flipped. Well, I think, sadly... The yacht is filthy, so I'm going to send the cleaner to the yacht, which uh, I get three points for every red card you play, mm -hmm. and red cards are one cheaper for me to play. And, and then, then we discard our final thief, because it doesn't matter. Uh, so now we do the gear round. So, boosh. So Steve is the starting <laughs> player on this round. Or... So over the course of the game, I think we will end up playing six thieves and 15 pieces of gear. Hmm. So one other icon that we didn't talk about is um, there are uh, artifacts, not artifacts. Stolen goods. Stolen goods. It's a hex symbol, and then there's an icon inside of it, and at the end of the game, you get... Um, for every set of unique stolen goods, you get more points. I think it's one one for one, three for two, and seven for three. Mm -hmm. I think. Yep. And if you win the Eiffel Tower, it gives you one point for every stolen good as well. Okay. And Steve and Steve uh, is set up because the green cards are the stolen good cards, so he's really set up on this one. For doing a bunch of stolen Speaking goods. of which, I'm going to give the Saint the Mark 15 grappling gun, which costs two, but it's one cheaper. Yep. Because it's the Eiffel Tower. I don't have a thief here! Oh, snapsies. Yeah, that's the tricky thing. You can only play gear on a thief. Mm-hmm. Dang it. Dang it. All right. 
Um, I'm going to play to the actress uh, the skeleton key, which actually gets me two gold. And then we pass hands. I think the the type of currency is actually called the scoundrel. That's the denomination. Yeah, the coins have a face on them. The scoundrel. Well, I can't not play the helping hand yep. on the artist. And you're basically one. set up for a ton of points right there. The thing that I like about this, we're going to go through the whole uh, gear deck. Mm -hmm. So everything is going to come out in due time. Uh, I'm going to play the Magneto, uh, which gets me a coin. And then I will get um, a coin for every agent on that side. So I get another coin because he has the cleaner over there. I'm now very rich. I remember this hand. Um, I will also play a skeleton key to the nun to get two coins. Now, there's only ten coins in the game, so if you need to take some and there's none of the supply, you'll take some from your opponent. Yeah, he'll start stealing from me. I'm going to play the Pyromatic Blaze Blaster Whoa. on the Madame, because otherwise he would play it on me. Mm -hmm. And I spent two bucks for that. Normally it would let me flip a gear, but there's no agents over there for me to do that with, so. Well, I might as well play Le Voleur Incognito Tuxedo, which will give me a caper for every green card at that location. Oof. All right, I'm going to play the smoke screen, which gets me a caper, um, and it's a dollar. And a point. Well, I don't get a point now. So like just to, I guess we can we can recap how many capers we have at the end of this. Yeah. I have a lot of options in this hand. A lot of options, but they're the same. Um, I'm gonna give the cleaner the eavesdropper for two coins. That gives me a caper for every thief at the opposing location. I'll do a simple disguise, which gives me a caper. And then we discard our last card. So, as it stands right now, Steve currently has one caper for every green card with this card, and one caper for every green card with this card, and he has two green cards, so he has four capers. And a bonus caper because the saint has three pieces of gear. So, so he has five capers. Five capers. Yep. Um, on this location, I get one caper for every pair of purple and yellow, so I have two capers for my pairs. And then the purple cards also each give me a caper. So I have four capers on this side, whereas Steve has two capers because of my <laughs> two agents. Don't die! <laughs> and his card. That's Blackberry Habanero. Yeah. Hey, Heroic Logic. My madame down here actually has no capers. So there's no capers on either side of this, but she has a flamethrower, so I'm winning. <laughs> Who takes a flamethrower to a chapel? <laughs> I mean, have you seen the madame? <laughs> All right, round three. This is a thief round. What did we do wrong? That's the wrong number uh, of cards. Three, three cards. We yeah. do three cards in this round. There's the exact correct number of cards to do the draft every round, so. Oh. <coughs> and you play first. I do play first. Well, I need to play the Bon Vivant here because it would be way too many points if you played it. Is he? I just want to say I feel like this is the like mid-century version of the yuppie, right here. Bon Vivant, so the the good lifer. I think it says. Um, there's actually a concert going on on the yacht, mm. so I'm gonna send the conductor. Oh, that kind of concert. Yeah, That's who gets? <coughs> Hey, do you need some water? Okay. Mm, I'm gonna 
go ahead and put the smuggler at the Eiffel Tower because <laughs> if I don't steal it, mm -hmm. uh, because it gives you a wild artifact, which is like really great. Hey, David. All right, I'm just doing. Um, oh wait, we discard the last card. <gasps> I'm doing the chef over here. Yep. Never mind that. Yeah, that, that's the interesting thing where you, once you get this hand, the other one is going to go to your opponent. Um, the Dom is actually going to go to the chapel. All right, and then we just grab the last card. Me a coin. Wow, you've got a stack of money there. I do. All right, next round is six cards. <clears throat> what happened to my last piece of gear that I just dropped? I don't know. I have no idea. I only have five, though, so I haven't cheated. Oh, Yet. it's under. It's a bad idea. All right, and Steve starts. All right. I think I need to play this here. The Suckomatic Suction Scalers for one. Ouch. Yep. There's no way I'm going to win that one anymore. Because um, that just gives you two more capers. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play. Uh, this just gives you more points, though. Gross. All right. <clears throat> Uh, I'm going to play the Blaze Shield uh, suit Ooh. for two money, and I get two points for every red card you have on the other side. Um, yeah. All right. <clears throat> Um, I'm going to do, I'm going to do my best Professor X impression and play the Magneto, uh, which is going to give me one oh. coin and then Hi, one Eric. coin, Bye, Eric. one coin for every thief at the opposing location. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the, um, because the artifacts are across your whole group, right? Yeah. So, um, I'm, the artifact sets are across everyone. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and play this blue card to the chef. So now I at least have one caper at that location, <coughs> which is important. Um, but I have to pay two money. <coughs> Still dying over there, aren't you? Aren't you? The dumb is going to get a grappling gun for two. As she would, as she would. <clears throat> um, he's going to go ahead and get a, a fancy fire suit. Whoa. Yeah. He's got like the boring one, now he's got the fancy one that looks like a tux. Um, I'm going to give the conductor a simple disguise. Which I just want to point out, I would wear that on a daily basis. The glasses, the mustache, and the flat hat. I mean, it's basically already your disguise. You would just need the flat hat. Yeah. Actually, that's John's disguise, I think. Um. Hmm. Very interesting. I'm gonna play. <clears throat> no, I can't afford it. It's fine. Everything's fine. Um, I'm gonna play the. Pl 
Plasma safe cutter. Whoa. Um, there, which actually gets me a coin. Uh, and then my turn. Yes. Oh wait. wait oh yes. Sorry. Um, the dom is gonna get a skeleton key, which is going to get me two more scoundrels or coins, as they say. Okay. I think I'll do I'm torn. Uh, I'll do this one, which gets me a point for blue at that location. And then we discard our last gear card. Discarding the Blaze Blaster. And then we're in round five. And so our last two thieves, but we only play one. Of course. <clears throat> and I start. Yeah, you start. And I'll play the auctioneer. Which gives me a point for every art or stolen good. I will play the tourist. Which gets me one coin and gives me a caper for every three gear at that location. And I will discard the mime. Sorry, mime. No. And that was that round. So now it's the last round of the game, and we gear up one last time. And that is the all the cards. So you see all the cards every time you play. <coughs> uh, and that's why I think it's important that there's locations that are in different ones. Um, oof. Steve starts. Um, I will give a helping hand to the cleaner for two. I do false documents for one that gives me a caper for every yellow that's Whoa. there. Yeah. It's super gross. My yacht team is they're doing it right. I did it again to myself. It's cool. But cool. Hello, um, Ant. Tis the season. Um, I will pay one to put a smoke screen down here in the yacht, which gets me a point and a key. Okay. I am going to play um, another safe cracker to the Madame to give me a dollar. <clears throat> um, I will play Suckomatic Suction Scalers to twist. Um, you already played it yeah, and paid it. it. <laughs> I'll do that to get skeleton key. Um, I will also play a skeleton key to the dom. Blaze Master Pyromaniac, which flips your purple one, which means the number of capers you have just went down. Oh yeah, yeah. Because it's not a green card. Yep. And that still counts as a gear card. But not as a green. It's not as a green. Da, 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 da. That is unfortunate. I'm really excited to resolve this round. <laughs> okay, well, then I'm gonna play a false bottom briefcase here, which costs one less, so it's two. And because of card counting, that's the last Blaze Master because there's only three in the deck. Oh, you know how many Blaze Masters there are, sir? Yeah, there are three. Well, I couldn't lock green anyway. Yeah. 
So, um, but I can play this blue top secret file over there ah. for the last blue card. So right. now we do the ugh, scurry. So we have Steve and we have Tiffany. And then now we go through and score. First, we figure out who won each location. So for the Eiffel Tower, um, Steve had a bunch of capers, but I dwindled them down. But he's still going to win it. So he has one caper for every green. And he has one, two, three, four green cards. Um, and so he has four capers. Plus, he has fully geared out thieves. So he's getting an additional two points for his geared out thieves. So he has six capers on this side. Whereas I get one caper for every red card, which gives you one here. And this thief is fully geared out. So I actually only get two here. So he definitely wins the Eiffel Tower. So he will get, for the Eiffel Tower, three points. Um, which I'll write and down we, Yeah, we can score them after we... So for the yacht, Steve gets... Uh, caper point for every pair of green and purple, and he only has one pair, so it's mm -hmm. one point, one caper point. And then he has one caper for every agent uh, that I have, and there's two, so he's up to three. Uh, and then he has two more from here, so it's five, and then it's fully geared out, so it's six. So he's six. I don't know if I'm going to win this. I get one caper point for every pair of gold and purple and i have three pairs mm -hmm. so it's three points and then i have two additional points just from capers so it's up to five and then i wow. have this card which gives me a caper for every gold and i have three more so that's eight and then these two are fully kitted out so it's actually ten. Ten capers ten capers oh and I, it's i didn't yacht. notice that where you get two points oh, for yeah, every gross. pair it's, of it's super purple gross. and yellow. Yeah. Wow, that's it's a lot of points. Gross. Yeah. Um, so I get the eye. So now the chapel, Kyra's gets uh, one caper for every three pieces of gear. He only has one. This one for every pair of green and gold, which he has two pairs of. So he has uh, one plus another two. So he's at three. And then this is fully kit kitted out. So four caper points on that side. This side, um, I get... A bonus, I get caper points for every pair of blue in any other card, and I have three pairs, so that's three. And then I have two fully kitted out agents, so that's five caper points. So, did I say four for yours? I think you said one, two, two three, three, four. Four. And I get five. Oh, dang So it. I you get the it. chapel as well. I so you're probably going to win this one. Now we do uh, points per location. So Steve only gets uh, one, or he only gets one location, so he gets three points. And then... One for every artifact I have there. Oh, oh. Sorry, is that what that meant? I uh, thought it counted as I just artifacts in general. I think so. Or, actually, let me see. Uh, the Eiffel Tower... But one I, point for each stolen you received across all locations. That's what I thought, yeah. Including location rewards. So what'd you get? Okay. So what's your actual points there? So three, How many locations? Four, or four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you get ten points. Okay. So then I get four points by base, and then another two points for every pair of uh, yellow and purple. And I have three pairs. So it's seven points from this one. And then this one is five points plus two points for every agent that I have. So it's another... And you have ten, right? Because you have three times two is six plus four. Oh, right. Yes, sorry. That's 10, and then this is another 7. Yeah. So I get 17 points from locations. It's going to be hard to beat. And now we do thief points. So let's just do Steve's first again. Uh, his saint doesn't give any points. His artist doesn't give any points. He gets 3 points from his cleaner because I have... Oh, no, nope, nope. there's no red cards. Uh, yeah, and none of his other... Uh, dude's I, any points. I did not focus on getting points for my thieves, which may um, have been a mistake. Um, my auctioneer gets one point per artifact that I have, so I have one, two, or stolen good, one, two, uh, three, I believe is all I have, and then my banker yeah, gives me all. one point for every gold card um, in this section, so it's another three, so I'm at six total. And then Madame gives me a point for every. Oh, did you? Were you 
spending the extra dollar on that side? You weren't. Oh, no, I wasn't. So, so cheated. I cheated. That's fine. My victory was uh, hollow. My Madame doesn't give me any more, so I'm at six on that. And then we get points for equipment. Hoi. Oh, no. The bon vivant, um for every blue green on this side, and I have two more, so I actually am at yeah. eight points. On One thing, side. the ability descriptions are actually pretty easy to figure out. Like, if there's a pin pointing towards you, it means your location. I know it's really tiny. And if there's a pin pointing the other way, it's your opponent. And then if there's no pin, it would mean everywhere. So The iconography is very simple. Yeah. Um, okay. So, points for gear. Boom. This one's going to be a bear. Um, I don't think... I think I get one. Yeah, he has one card that gives him one point. Um, my points for gear, uh, you don't have any red cards on that side, so it doesn't matter. I get one point for this one. I get two more points there, so I'm at three, four, five, and then this is one point for every blue times two, so plus six, so I'm at 11 points from gear. And then the artifact set. So I only have one set of three, which is seven points. I already know that. So Steve has, I see one set right here, and then another set right there, and then an extra one. So he has two sets of three and one set of one. So that's 15. 15 points. I think you still got me, though. So Steve is at 26. And, I mean, you did better than yesterday. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 43. So, uh, it's, the score is 26 to 43. Yeah. I, I gambled on getting points from stolen goods and from winning the, You went uh, really heavy on trying to win these, which I think was the mistake. Well, and plus I didn't even win those two, so. Yeah. I'm just gonna log this really fast. Um... So yeah, that was that was caper. I was gonna say this is your second game and my third game because mm -hmm. I played one demo of it. Um, and I've only played Paris, so the other cities do add more. They have slightly different rules on the different cards. Um, yeah. And that played pretty fast, like with teach and setup and blathering. Teach setup, minutes. dog feeding. Yeah. Stalling for time. Yeah. 45 minutes because I'm just like I, I would want to play this again or play it like best out of three and mostly because I lost the box says 30 to 45 minutes which I think is really interesting I think that honestly like we could play this game in 15 minutes if we weren't streaming it and doing the teaching and setup like I feel like we could break this down and play it again in 15 minutes oh yeah which um, we won't but we could so yeah I mean we could um, let's see, one other thing. The pink ones for the locations. Yeah. I was just going to say, like, the deck of locations is huge relatively to the fact that you're only doing a few of them. Like, there's four more just in Paris. Which are, yeah, they're pretty much all artifact scoring. Um, and then the other... The other defaults, there's probably another. Yeah, there's another seven basic ones. Your standard locations you steal stuff from, and these are mostly. Looks like these are all basically card scoring, like points for sets of things. So, yeah, let's talk about thoughts about the game. I mean, I've only played it twice. Uh, I've talked a lot already about the production quality of the game. It's very high. The cards are very thick. They're very nice. I was shuffling the gear deck last night, and I was thinking, like, how... Um, just how, like, the snap in the cards. We are pretentious game people now. Um, but, like, they're really good cards. They're linen finish. Um, the art is very nice. The, like, the production quality matches the graphic design of the art. If that makes sense. Like, you would expect a game with with this style art to have, like, a nicer quality um, finish, and it does. It, they did a really great job. Just everything is nice. It's, like, very thematic and appropriate for the theme. So, yeah, that's the production. Uh, as far as gameplay goes, 
For a two-player game, the drafting mechanic, I can definitely see why they've made multiple locations that have different cards that you mix in, because I already knew kind of the potential of, like, some of the sets that came out, and so, um, because we played Paris last night, so I already knew some of the combos that I could pull out, so it's interesting to see what different locations would provide different combos. We've only, I've only played it twice, Steve's only played it three times, so I can't, you know, give, like, amazing thoughts about it, but, um... Yeah, I also was not focusing really on combos. I was more focused on getting capers, and I think that was to my detriment because the amount of either points or extra capers you can get from like stocking up sets of locations. One thing I was trying to do is make sure not to max out thieves too early because I was noticing what we played last night. If you want to play gear at a location, but you don't have a thief, you're completely stuck for that gear round, and you have to throw that gear somewhere else. Yeah. Um, so it's really important to kind of, like, leave yourself open. Yeah. But uh, I feel like for... I don't know. There's a lot of games that are like, oh, yeah, we're two-player, and there's a lot of great two-player games that come out. I don't know if, yet if I would say this game's, like, an amazing two-player game. There's definitely games that we have... Um, that I feel are more interesting, more engaging for a two-player experience. I do really like the, it's kind of got the, a little bit of the vibe of like Battle Line or Shot and Totten or Lost Cities or um, even Hanuma Koji where you have certain territories and you're playing cards to either side to do those territories. But um, I think what it does really interesting for a two-player game, which you don't see very often, is a two-player drafting game. You really don't see a lot of really good two-player drafting games. Um, just because it's hard to do right in a two-player game. I'm trying to think. There was one that we got recently and we played, and, and I was excited about it. Um, and now I'm completely blinking. I'm like, what game is it? Uh... But, like, all of the, like, classic two-player games, they're not they're not drafting games. There's, like, you pick, I choose. There's hand management ones where you are trying to play from your hands, trying to manipulate your opponent. There's, um, there's even, like, trick-taking games now, two-player trick-taking games. There was two that came out last year that are really good. Uh, but a two-player-specific drafting game is tough. Um, like, oh, Seven Wonders Duel. Seven oh, Wonders yeah. Duel. Two, tough. Summer Winter's Duel is, like, I think the first major two-player drafting game that came out, and, like, it's very different. You can't compare it to here, but I think that I like how this game does the drafting in regards to the pyramid on the rounds more than Seven Wonders Duel. Because with Seven Wonders Duel, there's three phases, and the pyramid basically lets you preview some stuff but not preview some stuff, whereas in this game, like, the rounds on which you can see stuff. You can see everything in your hand and you can see stuff, everything in your opponent's hand. And so like in a normal drafting game, you can start planning immediately. Um, as soon as you've seen all the hands or enough of the hands, you can be like, oh, well in three turns, this will be back to me. What's the likelihood of this still being there? You know, and, and plus or minus those, leaving that in the deck, so. Yeah, and here, I think what's interesting, we're playing three rounds, but we don't score until the end. And I think initially when I was taught, I was like, that's weird. Why don't you score in the middle? And I think part of that is once you've seen both hands, you have perfect information about all the cards in your game. So you can say, okay, there's two of these cards. I need to play one. You can only play one of them by the time it gets back to me. So I can plan ahead a little bit. Yeah. But because I'm not scoring and maybe because it's the first round, I still don't know what's going to happen. So I like the fact that we have really good information about the round we're playing, but not about how it impacts later. The other thing I really like is how many of the card abilities affect, are about uh, stuff on your side or stuff on the other side. So it means the cards have different utility to both of us. Like I'm, I'm having to weigh or, I mean, Tiffany did it twice in that game. She's like, I'm going to play this flamethrower, even though it does nothing for me and gets me a point, or just gets me a point. I'm going to play it so he doesn't play it against me. Or, you know, if I play a purple card, I know it's not going to get played by Tiffany in her set. But So, like, I'm starting to think, what card in my hand is she going to want to play on her turn, and do I want to play a card more on my turn? And part of that is because it'll the sets and everything are affected differently. 
Um, I really also like the fact that you can score points independently of the control of the location. And I think, like, the last game we played, I won two locations and you won the game. So you can go yeah. more for points or you can go more for control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or, like, the location that gave you two points for every set of cards, that was super valuable for you, but it wasn't as much for me. So, like, even the point value you could get from control is different. So, no, I, I like all of that, and it feels a little... I think it it works well as a drafting game, especially because we play all the cards, so I don't need to worry about a card not coming out. And once you play locations more than once, you see all the cards. So, um, they add... Apparently, like, the different locations are different difficulties, so... Is it London or Rome? That's... London is the middle one, and Rome is the most. I think Rome mm. was about preventing your opponent from getting coins, oh. something like that. Um, but yeah, the different, the extra abilities and characters and locations are different for each of the cities. Yeah. So that definitely adds some replayability because, uh, like you said, you play all the cards. So art by Imrik. It's great. Definitely worth it. Um, there's also a three and four player variant. Steve read the rules on those. Uh, basically the three player variant, the person who, your third player is building the hands for people and distributing them. And the third player will win if the two player scores are within a certain margin. And the four player variant, I don't know. The four player variant was each player has a, there's a lookout and a mastermind. We were both the masterminds in our thing. And the lookout is basically going to give two cards to the mastermind on their team. And then the mastermind will play one and give one to the other mastermind. So it's sort of a like drafting via the other players. Mm. Um, it seems like that would be more more exciting if everybody had played the deck and knew the cards and yeah. the card count and everything. I think if you're just getting started, I think you'd want to know the two player really well. Yeah. Yeah, I also like that it's just two-player. I think my favorite two-player games are the ones that are just for a specific player count. I think this would completely fall apart with more players. Like, or like, it the things it does really well, it does really well at two players, and it doesn't really need more. So. Yeah, well, it's a two-player drafting game, and it does, it does what it says in the box, uh, which is it's a two-player drafting game. It actually doesn't say that anywhere on the box. It says, oh, no, it does. A drafting game for scoundrels. Um, so, yeah, I think $25 two-player drafting game... I, I want to play again. I already want to play the other locations. So, yeah. Yeah, and I think because of how fast it would play, is I would almost want to do a best of three like Jaipur. Like if we were sitting at a bar or something, I would totally want to play a best of three. So. Totally, for sure. The scoring can be a little fiddly. We do have to do the score pad and you have to go through stuff. So that's kind of the one negative I feel on it. Uh, also, once you learn the deck like enough, enough, if you're playing against a new player, you're totally going to destroy them. So there are some negatives in that, but like the latter argument could be said about a lot of stuff. There's a lot of games where if you've played it a few times, if you play against somebody new, you're you're gonna destroy them anyway. So, um, so that's Caper, designed by uh, I'm gonna butcher your name again. I'm really sorry. You Una Rubio, Una Rubio, um, published by Keymaster Games, art by Emric. Um, and yeah, you can, it's coming out at Gen Con 2018. You can pre-order it now from capergame.com, I believe was their website. Um, so yeah, that, it caught Steve's eye. He demoed it and decided that I would probably like it. And so he's right. Uh, I don't know if I like it enough to put it in the two player, like hidden built in fancy section up there, but I definitely want to play it again and I do enjoy it. I think what remains to be seen is if, um, Steve can beat me at it because, <laughs> We do, we have some two-player games that we've played that I really enjoy, but, like, Steve's brain just doesn't fire in the right way for them or something, um, and so it becomes not enjoyable for me because I just destroy him every time we play. Yeah, and I so. think, especially because this is drafting, like, the lesson for me, and probably if you go back and watch the replay, the lesson for me is don't let Tiffany get certain cards. Um... Like, I often don't pay you enough attention. You didn't even see the, like, pyro. If I flipped it, you would lose the points. Because I could have done it to you twice, but I needed more money. I was like, no, I'm not going to do it till I get more money. So, yeah, that's the best part. Right. Is that card... I Actually, I could have done it to you three times, but I... Because I had both pyros. Anyway. Um, well, one thing that's interesting about the pyro is it only flips the topmost card, so you can still guard against it somewhat. 
Yeah. You just left that tax yeah. out. Okay. All right. Um, so that's it for Caper. If you're watching live, uh, hang out. We're going to do a bonus stream in like 10 minutes, maybe, of Guns Sean Clever. Which was nominated for one of the Spill the Yards Awards. I can't remember which one. I think it's Kenner. Uh, I, it's probably Kenner because I feel yeah. stupid every time I, yeah. I, I play this. So we're going to do this as a bonus stream if you're hanging out and watching. Uh, if you're not, it is a uh, up two to four player, or no, it's one to four player um, drafting dice rolling roll and write game. Um, that was nominated for the Kenner Spiel, so it's getting some buzz and we've had it and we enjoy it. And so we're going to play it. Uh, and you can find that video on the YouTubes. Otherwise, thanks for watching, yep. and we'll see y'all next time. All right. Thanks for watching. Good we'll night. see you.